It is 7.02 p.m. on September 21st, and I will call this Board of Selectmen in Melville, Massachusetts meeting to order. So going through the agenda, announcements. Peter, do we have any announcements? Um, I guess I'll put it under announcements um, versus correspondence. We I had a message from someone from Elizabeth Warren's office um, that the town uh, received the grant uh, from the 2019 FEMA uh, assistant to the fire safety grant. And it's about 32,400 and some odd dollars uh, for new jaws of life. So the, you know, the folks in the public safety did a lot of work to put the grant together and lo and behold, it's paying off. And I think there's a press release that's the chief has put out on that uh, on at least their Facebook page. Okay, great. Yeah, so it's good news. Okay. Any other announcements? No, I have none. Okay. Um, minutes to approve. I didn't see them in our packets, so I assume no, so there were no minutes uh, ready as of today. So we'll have to do those on the next uh, go around. Okay. Um, and then any other correspondence, Peter? Nope. All right. Cruising along. Um, is anyone from the Board of Health on to provide an update on COVID-19? So they sometimes show up, sometimes they don't. Um, not tonight, it looks like. Uh, they do have their semi-monthly, I guess, or bi-weekly meetings on Wednesday nights. And that's a good time to uh, uh, listen in on what they're doing. I think at this stage, they're going to have to start talking about Triple E as well as uh, COVID-19. Okay. And I think they're also going to talk about um, they're in process of setting a date for flu shots uh, for seniors, or actually for all, all residents. They did it at the senior center last year, but they're looking to set it up at MES because that's a better you know, set up for people to drive up, get the flu shot and go. Um, last I saw today, they haven't identified a, a date yet, but that will be coming. Okay. I'm going to move on to new business. All right. So the first item is the consideration of the public way acceptance. Um, so I saw the email that we got today. So it sounds like we just need to make a motion that the Board of Selectmen vote to lay out as a public way, Herto Road, Rondon Road, and the constructed portion of Albert Drive, each is shown in the plans entitled Roadway Acceptance Plans of Herto Road, Rondon Road, and Albert Drive, ST0004, 67.26, in Millville, Massachusetts, dated November 2nd, 2017. Is that it? Do we need to? That, that's correct. So, uh, you, know, you know, you've seen your packet, a, a process of getting there, but that's basically where you're at this evening. Okay. It's that motion, and you can do the acceptance of the road. Okay. So the the uh, planning board has has given their blessings to this, I assume. That's yes. right. And in your in that email, you see a letter from the planning board to the selectmen mm -hmm. saying that they voted to accept. Uh, they recommend accepting these votes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they and had it's a... still a process to go through for the town before it's final. Right. Um, sorry, just a second. Okay, so they did, I watched that meeting actually and they voted unanimously, I believe it was four to zero. They had four people at that meeting, not uh, five, so. Okay. So will someone make a motion? I move that the Board of Selectmen vote to lay out as a public way, Herto Road, Rondon Road, and the constructed portion of Albert Drive, each as shown on the plans entitled Roadway Acceptance Plans of Herto Road, Rondon Road, and Albert Drive, SDA 
zero 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 four six seven point two six in Millville, Massachusetts, dated eleven two two thousand seventeen. And I will second that. Okay. Any discussion? Negative. <laughs> okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Opposed? Since no one reads nothing. Okay, perfect. Um, okay, and so then I see that Casey's here. Um, yes. She reviewed the business plan and the consideration of host community agreement approval. Can, Can you go? Oh, hi. <laughs> it's Cassie. Sorry. Oh, sorry, Cassie. I'm sorry. It's okay. I get it all the time. I'm used to it. <laughs> okay. You're no. You're right. It's C A S. I thought for some reason I was seeing E Y. I apologize. Okay. Cassie. No worries. No worries at all. Um. So, okay. Yeah. Do, thanks do for having me. Yep. Thank you for coming. Do you have a presentation for us or I, I didn't um, document? Peter, I did Peter put into your packets our business plan? Uh, yeah. Okay, perfect. So, um, no, I don't have a presentation electronically, but I figured we could go over and I could tell you guys about what we've been going over and figuring out for the last couple of months since we talked last. Okay. Um, so we have um, finalized an agreement for the property at 10 and uh, 18 Prospect Street. Um, so we'll be utilizing the 6,000 square foot building um, for, for all three licenses, uh, retail, manufacturing, and cultivation. Um, we're planning uh, the retail to be about 1,200 square feet. Um, and in the plan, you'll see that we are proposing to um, the planning board uh, the idea of a drive through system to kind of help prevent um, traffic and it would also help to speed along the process for people that are not wanting to go into, you know, a retail environment given the current pandemic, which I think is a nice option. Um, we'll also be utilizing an online ordering system for like an express pickup and uh, trying to, you know, respect our neighbors and keeping things flowing in the neighborhood. Um, uh, our financing is coming um, from uh, an investor friend of ours that is um, named Jasmine Chatoris. And um, she is investing our capital and we're also um, leveraging our finance uh, agreements through um, wholesalers to be able to finish the project. Um, we have a timeline that if we can get uh, the host agreement signed, uh, we have a community um, outreach meeting um, at, that we're going to hold at the property on the 30th of this month. And then we'd be able to submit our application, which I finished last week, um, by October 1st. So given that our timeline um, to process through the Cannabis Control Commission should be about 90 days. I've heard that um, they're really caught up right now and they're actually processing applications through pretty quickly. Um, and another cool uh, part about our project is we're actually applying through an expedited application because we'll be a women owned business. Um, Jasmine and myself are the only shareholders that will be on our um, application. So we're really proud of that. And we're going through the process to get certified through the state's SDO office right now. Um, so 90 days, uh, the Cannabis Control Commission would have to uh, approve our application. And I believe it would take us about 120 days or 90 to 120 days to actually build out the facility. Um, in that time, they call it our provisional approval. Um, and after 120 days, we'll be able to have plants in the building. Um, we've decided to um, wait for our crop to be finished before opening for retail sales. Um, it's something that we toyed back and forth with a lot, but um, we felt it was more important to have our product with our launch rather than to have other people's product and then wait for ours. Um, Cause we think that ours is the best <laughs> and we think everybody's going to also feel that way too. So um, the harvest will take about 120 days. So that would bring us to um, our retail store opening um, August or September, 2021. So it feels like it's taken a really time, a long time to get to where we are now, but it seems really close now. Okay. We're thrilled. Do you guys have any questions for us about our project? I, I have our finances and we kind of proje projected um, sales for year one, two, and three. Um, if you guys wanted me to go over that. Yeah, I would. I did review that. And I was actually wondering if you came up, like I saw the low and high estimate. Yeah. 
Is so on, yeah, how did you come? <laughs> so it's a cannabis standard. Um, we kind of projected uh, a low and a high. So if you look on um, on our uh, projected sheet, it kind of gives a description for year one as being if we had, because we'll have to build into a perpetual cycle. It doesn't, <laughs> you know, we're, it's not going to be, um, you know, instantly our building is filled, we're going to have to grow into the building for the first year. Mm -hmm. So that was kind of why I said that 50% of capacity. Um, and that would be one layer, because we will ultimately be multiple layers inside of the building, not adding additional floors, just utilizing this, uh, the height of the current building. Mm -hmm. So the first column is what I'm calling year one. And you'll see there's a two pound per light versus a three pound per light. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to be utilizing the latest technology in LEDs. Um, and we came up with kind of, you know, a high projection, low projection based on industry standards and what yields other growers are getting based on that. So mm -hmm. you'll see like the flower sales is based on six, uh, an average of 6,400 per pound. Mm -hmm. um, and we took that based on what wholesale numbers are and compared it also to, we went out into the stores and saw what the current prices are. Um, and we just calculated up to a pound price. So just to simplify the numbers. Um, and then we have our host agreement in there. We have our total sales. Um, we have our taxes in there and you can see the net profit down at the bottom. Um, so we, you know, on the low end, we'll do 1.6 million in a year. And I think that's a very low, I think that we'll probably see more year two numbers mm -hmm. in, uh, than year one, but it kind of depends on when we're opening. So, um, but I think that we'll, so you'll see year three as well. And that's utilizing, um, a three tiered system. So if you can imagine the square footage of us being able to utilize one, one like full floor we'll be able to have three so um it's it's possible and i think it's really realistic that we could be doing year three projections in year two okay and then you know by year three four you know we have committed to each other that we'll readdress and see if we need to expand you know see if maybe we need to um you know open another retail and another community like after year three we'll kind of look at our square footage and see where we need to go okay really um i broke down by um item what the projected numbers would be um and we'll focus on having um flour is the largest selling item in the state of massachusetts um pre-rolls are really high on that ranking list as well mm -hmm. um and concentrates edibles um and we would also like to sell clones and realizing that there's a there's a limit um to how many plants people can grow and things like that our computer systems through the state will be able to track all of that so we will not be able to sell more clones than they're allowed to have in a period of time and what they're legally allowed to possess at home uh, i put in our financial projections for our budget and how we're going to spend money um and that's all in there um i think that they're all pretty reasonable expenses um we're going to finance everything that we possibly can so that we don't have to give away a lot of equity in our business, mm -hmm. um, trying to keep it small. And it's really cool to be working with partners that are on the same page with us. Um, for security, we're um, utilizing um, American Alarms in um, Auburn, mm -hmm. um, and they're really great. Um, I'm putting together a security plan for the chief and I to go over right now. Um, that would be a next step for us. I'm happy to bring you guys in on that if you'd like to. <laughs> um, if you flip over, you can kind of see our plans. On, I don't know if you have a color copy or not, but um, you can kind of see our plans on what we're looking for our retail to look like. Mm -hmm. We want it to be clean and inviting, um, easy to maintain, uh, especially right now while sanitizing a lot. So um, we're thrilled. I was in the building today and um, I can see our vision finally, like, you know, where yeah. things will be. It's, it's, it's really cool and exciting. Mm -hmm. Do you guys have any questions for me? I had two more questions. Yeah. Um, so one I saw in the host agreement, there was to yeah. renegotiate the um, fees that were in section two, the 3%, I believe. Did I, read that in I didn't, I didn't have any objections to 3%. Okay. I thought I had read that in the host agreement. 
No, I, uh, the agreement that Peter sent me, I believe last week, I was, in, I'm in full agreement with, I don't, I don't want to change anything on it. <laughs> yeah, it was. I think what you're referring to is after five years, Jennifer. Yes. Oh. We have to go back to renegotiate. Yes. Right. Things. And so that is per years. the Cannabis Control Commission. Oh, that is sorry. not per Cassie. Oh, got it. So their current guidelines suggest that the agreement should be five years and then, you know, but I'm leaving, we're leaving it up to us to be able to renegotiate that. Okay. And then the last question I have, and then I'll see if Kevin or Andrew had questions was, um, I saw an email trail. There was something around spontaneous inspections. Yeah. And I was wondering what, like, what would you think is too many? Like, cause I understand right. like, we want to be able to do that because I think right. Oh, absolutely. But I, but I also agree that like if it, there's a spontaneous inspection, you know, every single Wednesday, that might be a bit much. Right. So it actually it was more from a grower's standpoint. Mm -hmm. So for me, our our light cycle is important. So if somebody was to come in the building at any time outside of normal business hours it would break our light cycle. Emergencies, we understand. And we, you know, we have to make realistic expectations that an emergency is going to happen. I want the police to come in. Absolutely. But our, and our attorney had suggested, you know, we know the chief ap approves of cannabis businesses being in town. We would not probably be here if, if he didn't, you know, you have to have a chief in a town that are accepting of the project. But say he decides to retire at some point and the next chief isn't as excited about the project. We just want to make sure that it's not unreasonable. If there's a reason, yeah, absolutely. We have to make all of our footage available to you guys at any time. And we don't want to do anything to, to not be a good partner. You know what I mean? It's just, we want to make sure that there's respect. And Peter reassured me that it's not going to be an issue and that we could, you know, obviously if, if we felt harassed, we would bring it to your attention, bring it to our, our attorneys would be bringing it to your attention. Like, I don't think it's going to be an issue. That's why when he said, Hey, I'm going to put that back in there. I didn't have an argument back. I don't have an argument back. I talked to um, American alarms and I just asked like, Hey, has any other community had an issue? And they they reassured me that it's never been an issue um, that they have already they've asked other municipalities if they wanted 24 access to the feed and um, they've all said no you know I, I yeah I kind of uh, it's different in Rhode Island because Rhode Island has 24 access to our feed so we don't even have to worry about it they look at it without us even knowing um, so that's why I think that like we have that like a <laughs> So um, I have no objections to you guys, you know, the police department coming in. I would like to be there, you know, if, that's why, like, if we're going to do inspections, I would rather me be the pinpoint person dealing with that kind of stuff. But I understand that if they need to come in, they come in. Okay. Andrew or Kevin, did you have any questions or comments? Yeah, I had one question on mm -hmm. the, on the numbers for your year your one two and three projections yeah did you base those solely off of what you expect to sell or did you use um others other companies um or, or retail locations as a model of seeing what they've done and basing it off of that too so i based it off of what our building can actually produce um so if there's any excess products we are able to then wholesale to other businesses so this is based on the square footage and not relying on any procurement so i mean that number could go up as well and we will be outsourcing uh material like edibles we won't have a large enough space within our current square footage right now to um to produce our own edibles so we'll have to outsource that so that is not considered into that figure So do you know what other retailers are doing for business at the moment? The ones that are already in operation like, in this area? Current sales? Not, mm -hmm. but like I know as a whole what the market's doing, but I don't know individuals. Okay. But I recently took a tour and there are lines out the door in all of them. <laughs> Kevin, do you have any questions? I just 
was looking at uh, the the correspondence that Peter sent out about the uh, previous, um, I, I guess, uh, Kevin, partner. That's not quite ready for prime time. Okay, I was just going to. Okay, good enough. But I do have three, three or four questions for Cassie, if I could. Maybe that'll help the board get a better understanding. So, you're, Cassie, you're okay with the draft I sent you on yes. Thursday, Friday, right? Which reflects, you know, where we're at. So that that yes. agreement, the verbiage, has been pretty well scrubbed between the mm -hmm. town and, you know, Cassie uh, lifted uh, lifted luxury. Um, so that the verbiage is all good to go. Um, can you just, I want to you know, just talk briefly about the, the water and septic needs of your business vis-a-vis -vis the site that you're leasing, if you could briefly, okay? Um, Cassie? I don't know a ton about our septic system right now. Um, our water, we're, we can absolutely, if we had a greater demand for water than we can produce on site, we can always bring water in. Um, we super filter our water. Um, so our waste and the way that we water will be capturing all of our water and we won't have a lot of waste water. Mm -hmm. um, so our, our plants will be eating everything that we feed them. Gotcha, okay. That, that's great. That's on that. Mm -hmm. One of the points in your um, your business plan, you talked about your landlords. Who, who sounds like you're working well, and they're good good folks. Mm -hmm. I've spoken to them a number of times, um, but they've expressed interest in helping you expand into a larger building in the future. Is, yeah. is that the on site in Millville, basically? I, guess? I mean, potentially it could be. Um, I know that they do own some properties in Millville. So if we wanted to expand our current canopy space, we absolutely could within the town of Millville. Yep. And so then the other part is, uh, and this is the toughest one, I guess. Um, if you could talk briefly about now, here we are, you're before us for the third entity discussion. Yeah. And so, yes, we have uh, received some correspondence from one of your former partners with some concerns about the nature of this business. And, mm -hmm. you know, we've built in certain um, indemnities and all that yeah. in, the, in, in the clause, but we still don't want to get caught in any stickiness, if you will. Absolutely. And so just, just to help us understand, I think we talked briefly about your, you know, how you've evolved to the partnership you've mm -hmm. got. And this looks like a very solid relationship, but just talk briefly about that to help the Kevin you know, the board, folks on the board here have a mm -hmm. better level of comfort about the future Absolutely. because there is, you know, something kind of floating around out there. Yeah. Um, so the deal that we had with the partner that you're speaking of, um, it didn't work out. It, I want to be very uh, <laughs> diplomatic. Um, it, 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 her role was to bring in financing and yeah. she was, Cassie, just to yeah. let you know, this is a public meeting, so everybody gets to see it and mm -hmm. participate. Um, and I believe the person with whom you're speaking is probably watching the live stream as we speak. Okay. Um, so we went through different cycles of financing options, um, and we moved forward and dissolved the entity that was previously owned by myself and um, a partner. Um, it was dissolved in 2019. Um, we're coming up on almost a year now of it being dissolved. Um, and the expectations in our partnership agreement, uh, well, our, our agreement weren't met. So we're moving forward in different directions. Um, that's why when it changed in the beginning, I came back and presented to you uh, a project that I thought was going to be the right project. Um, and it that didn't work either going um, now we've changed to a new location. Um, everything about our new entity is completely different. Um, it's the fact that we're still growing cannabis is kind of the only thing that is the same. And the fact that we want to do it in Millville, the address is different. Um, everything is different. Okay. Um, so I'll just say we did, re I did receive uh, an email from your former partner mm -hmm. with some comments for mm -hmm. this evening. You know, I defer to the chair, but I, I don't know that the chair needs to read those comments because 
you know, some of them are arguably, uh, I, I don't know. I, yeah. know, I always look for fact. I don't know that was fact here, right. but um, so my point is that uh, we may be addressing this separately in the okay. future from this, but uh, that's not to prevent your former partner from speaking in the public forum this evening. Right. So you may hear more. Okay, thank you. Thank, thanks, Cassie. I'm all set. Take care. Sorry, I was on mute. Um, yep, so Peter, should we read these comments publicly? Is that allowed or? Well, it's, it's allowed again, be, but uh, they must be taken with a grain of salt is how I would put it. And particularly in the way I framed mm -hmm. my transmission to you on that, um, as Kevin was alluded to, because, because one of the things is there's a basically a, arguably a threat of legal action against the town here. And so that puts it into a different level of, of uh, conversation, I guess the way I put it. Okay. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not sure we should do this in a public forum, Peter, okay. just because of the nature of, of, of some of the comments. And uh, that's just my opinion. I think the real challenge is whether or not you want to defer to take a vote to approve the HCA this evening, or you wish to defer because of the uh, other circumstances. And I don't know that you want the other circumstances to prevent you from doing what you think is right for the town. But that's the best I, advice I could give you at this point. But there, you know, and it depends on Cassie's time frame um, that she briefly described, but I know you're trying to have something for the public in the near future contingent upon a, an executed HCA. So the board's next regular meeting is October 5th. They'll be meeting briefly on October 3rd, which is before the annual town meeting, at which point they could take a vote on this. And the other factor is that you're really not a full board this evening. And this is a fairly significant um, decision to be made. So, um, Peter, did we get any guidance from our attorney on what he advised? I didn't see it in this email. Oh, so I have no guidance back from him. Okay, oh. he's okay. Not yet. He, Not yet. You know, I got okay. three things on his dance card today. Yeah. Okay. So then I. Sorry, I'm sure this is probably disappointing for Cassie, but I think I would prefer to hear back from council. I want the best next. Okay. Year. I'm sorry. That's I know that's no, it's okay. Bad. I understand. I yeah. kind of expected some kind of hiccup. Okay. <laughs> I don't know if Andrew or Kevin have a different opinion. No, I'm I'm in agreement. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So I mean, October 5th is just a couple weeks away. So oh yeah. <laughs> it is uh, it'll be here before away. we know it. So thank okay. you. Well, thank you for coming tonight, Cassie, and answering no your questions, answering all our questions. No problem. Thank you, Cassie. Thank you. Yes. Okay. Um, okay, now the special town meeting warrant. I do have that email. Okay. Um, should I share this? Should I share my screen so everyone can see it or? If you can. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I should, that might be a good idea. Let me close all my other tabs so you don't embarrassingly see how many I have open because it's a lot. Um, okay. Oh, can the host please allow me to share my screen? Tim, can you please let it make it so I can share my screen? Ah, there we go. Okay. Do this. Put you guys over here so I can see everybody. Okay. Um. 
So we did read through all of these at the last meeting. So I think I would just be looking, unless people want to read them again. I don't want to make Andrew or Kevin, I want to make you do anything you don't. No, I'm, I'm, I'm good with it. Okay, just mm -hmm. making a recommendation and then we vote on recommending. Okay. All right. So article one, I'm looking for a motion to recommend monetary increases. Uh, so what what specific verbiage do we need to use? Just a recommendation to right. accept Article One monetary increases as it's written in the warrant. Is that sufficient, or does it need to be more than that? So, because we're these are already on the warrant, so this is more like our opinion on whether we support it or not. So, yeah, I think that's the word you want to use: is you're recommending to support Article One. Um, is written. All right, so I'll uh, I'll make a recommend recommendation that the board of selectmen uh, recommends Article One uh, monetary increases as written. Second. Any discussion? Negative. <laughs> All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. I know it's just the three of us, so it's like Kevin, Andrew, and then three zero, and there'll be Andrew and Kevin, and then three zero. Um, <laughs> okay, so the bill um, looking for a recommendation to support Article Two for bills of prior fiscal year. I make a motion to recommend Article Two bills of prior fiscal year as written in the warrant. I'll second. Any discussion? Yes, for discussion purposes, there have been none identified as of yet. That's not to say that there okay. won't be, but uh, right now there are none. Okay. Well, I think if your bill does come up, we want to be able to pay our bills. So um, all those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Three again. Okay. I'm looking for a recommendation to support Article 3 fiscal year 2021 budget adjustments. There's no amount here yet. So if I could on this one, you yeah. might want to hold off until just before the town meeting. Okay. Um, because what happened in the last go round for the annual town meeting was waiting for finance committee's recommendations. So that's really what you're technically, I think rec supporting is whatever they're recommending um, besides the verbiage of the, uh, the actual article. Um, so you, you did get the packet that they used to discuss the other night. They're holding a public hearing this Thursday night. Um, they went through all of the items for the adjustments to the budget. And they're generally supportive, although they didn't take a vote, but they're generally supportive of most of the items, including the 2% increases. Uh, some mm -hmm. public safety increases, uh, an amount for foreclosure tax title costs, and some um, stormwater and other related expenses. They're questioning uh, their level of support and amount for some additional requests by the highway department. So mm -hmm. that just gives you sort of the update of where finance was as of last Thursday night. Um, but all those amounts are listed on the schedule I sent to you earlier. Okay. So I guess, but if we don't, so then we would vote on our recommendation for this right before the town meeting on the third, so then it won't be printed on the paper for the people to review. That's true. So maybe you want to go for it. Yeah, you, you already know what the amounts are. You could yeah. subject it to finance committee amounts or however you want to do it. I mean, you might, sometimes the board of selectmen have different amounts that they recommend in the finance committee. Ultimately. Yeah, I guess that's. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't know whether you're likely to schedule another meeting between now and town meeting just for this purpose. Mm -hmm. um, well, I mean, we could have a very quick one. It just won't show in the, you know, to be determined, it will show as being open. And then you've state, stated at town, at meeting, town meeting where you're at on this. Okay. Because it really is for the voters to have some sense of where the leaders are, the town leaders are, both finance and board selecting on the various you know, budget increase requests. So. 
Okay. Then since we can, it won't be printed, um, but we could announce what, you know, who, how each of us voted and how and why. So I think that's okay. When Kevin and Andrew, what do you think? It's, it's hard to vote without seeing the numbers too. Well, yeah. that is difficult. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I would prefer to have our recommendation written on it, but not knowing the numbers would be kind of putting the cart uh, before the horse in a sense, because yeah, we don't know what the adjustments are. Okay, so why don't we skip three? And we can do that either right before the meeting or if we have another, Kevin, as you mentioned, another quick meeting. Okay, so moving on to four, looking for a recommendation to support Article 4 reimbursement of the general stabilization fund for payment to purchaser of 20 to Prater Street. Okay. I move to recommend article four reimbursement of general stabilization fund for payment to purchaser of 20 to Prater Street as written in the warrant. Looking in that. Okay. All, any discussion? <laughs> All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. All right. Um, this one as well, Peter, for number five, is there an amount coming or? Yeah, so right now the amount that's uh, been discussed with finance committee, and I think they're all generally in agreement, is to put in $100,000 into this. The liability of the town is the last valuation for the OPEB liability was about $480,000. Uh, today's valuation, is, I wouldn't surprise me if it's close to 600000 plus or minus. And so what this does, there's $45,000 currently in the fund, the stabilization fund here for this. This adds about adds 100000 to make it approximately 25% of it. And, you know, it, it's money, uh, it's taking free cash, and it, rather than putting it into one of those other stabilization funds, which are for a you know, if you will, a future need. This is really going against an existing liability. And so, uh, you know, talking to finance committee about it, they, they thought it all made sense to put a, a good amount away uh, this year on this. Also, uh, in an effort to make an, show an example for others who have to wrestle with OPEB liabilities that are frankly quite significant at uh, you know, BMR. So. I expect the 100,000 will be the amount that you'll be seeing okay. uh, put forth by the finance committee. But again, they haven't finalized that. Yeah. So Andrew and Kevin, similar to three, should we hold off until we get the numbers? Well, if we have a general idea of what they're going to do, we could make a motion to say that we're conditionally pending on yeah. that amount. And if not, we can then change and see where we go from there if they do have a different number. Kevin, is that agreeable to you? Or yeah, you I mean, that's that's fine. I, as long as we have some, I, uh, I don't want to say cap, but some, you know, realistic uh, number, then I'm good with that. Okay. So I'm um, looking for a motion to recommend to fund OPEB for approximately $100,000. And I don't know, Andrew, how you want to, or that yeah, more definitively. Um, so I move to recommend article 55 fund other post-employment benefits o opeb uh, pending the approval of it being a hundred thousand dollars does that work i think so second that's good i'll second that okay all those in favor oh sorry any discussion i always forget discussion okay all those in favor aye aye, aye. all right okay so for a capital stabilization fund, um, I did ha have a conversation with Aubrey and they were thinking around $200,000 to go into capital stabilization. Um, so I think we can make a similar motion um, around the 200,000 to recommend to support. Does that, is that agreeable, Andrew and Kevin? I think so. Yeah, I'm good with that. Background on that um that had a hundred thousand dollars in it it was used for the purchase of the new truck 
-hmm. So there's basically zero available. So this is replenishing that hundred and adding another hundred. So it gets it back to uh, gets it up to two hundred thousand. Okay. So I'll take this and I will make a motion that we recommend to approve Article 6, the Capital Stabilization Fund, pending approval of a $200,000 transfer as written on the warrant. Well, it wasn't written. Yeah, the 200 okay. is not in the warrant, so we're going to have as, to strike that. As, well, so the article as submitted pending approval of the $200,000. Sorry to say, uh, you might wanna just do the whole thing that way, it's clear. <laughs> okay, okay, so I will recommend that we support funding the Capitalist Stabilization Fund of $200,000 pending approval by the Finance Committee. What about the 200,000? I said 200,000. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry. That's okay. It's I'll second. <laughs> um, any further discussion? Okay. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Opposed? There's no one right. Okay. I think Andrew, you and I eyed at the same time, so I didn't catch you. Um, yeah. Okay. For the general stabilization fund, I haven't heard a number here, Peter. I don't know if you're aware of a number. Yeah, so they're going to use up the lion's share of the remaining amount of free cash, but leaving um, a modest amount, as I call it, cushion for you know, town cash flow, because once uh, an amount is approved, it goes into a separate bank account and it's just not available for, uh, you know, smoothing of cash flow. So we're going to leave about a $70,000 buffer. So right now their numbers, I think if you were to make a motion, if the, the number is somewhere between 200 and 240,000. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be at least 200,000. And you might want to use that phrasing at least 200,000. Okay. Are you, Kevin and Andrew, are you comfortable voting on this one as with the kind of a uh, range or do you want to wait? I'm okay either way. It can't, they, is it suspected that it won't be lower than 200,000 or higher than 240, right? Or? Uh, I don't expect that it will be lower than 200,000. Will it be higher than 240? Probably not. Okay. I'd be very surprised. So I would just use at least. I wouldn't do a range. I just do an at least mm -hmm. number. And, uh, you know, I think they're going to be good stewards of figuring out what the right number should be there. Mm -hmm. So I move to recommend Article Seven General Stabilization Fund for at least two hundred thousand to be transferred into that account. I'll second that. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Um, all right. So Article 8, this was actually originally going to be on the spring, uh, sorry, the um, annual town meeting warrant, um, but we pulled it off to try to shorten up the meeting. So um, I'm pretty familiar with this. This is for a backhoe and to, it's going to help offset some operational costs in about three years. Um, although Ke uh, Brian was very honest and emailed me and said, you know, we probably won't see the full payback in year one that we originally projected because we didn't buy this. The purchase has been pushed out, so we're not going to get the benefits. Like he was hoping to get benefits in August and September, which obviously we don't have it, so we're not going to get those financial benefits. Um, What's... Uh, uh, my question was, what's the general expected life of a front loader slash backhoe? Yeah, I think um, on the capital planning meeting, um, one of the gentlemen works for the um, Department of Public Works in Bellingham, 
and he mentioned that they've had it for like 15 years or 20 years peter it was it has a pretty good long life if you yes. maintain it and, and brian actually has one that he purchased used i don't know at least 10 or 12 years ago but it's a 1980s vintage so these things last a long time so, yeah, so it's not something that, like we get three years later or four years later and then it dies or something like that. I think you'll get decades out of this. Okay, <laughs> that's that, I just thought I'd check. Okay, those are the investments Andrew likes to hear. Yeah, okay, so I will make a motion to recommend to support Article 8 for the highway department to purchase a front loader slash backhoe from 45,000 for $45,000 from the general stabilization fund. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Okay. Um, the regional agreement revisions. And I did see that Jane is on if we have any questions for her. One quick side note, not not to do with the regional agreement. Is it just me or is the font smaller for the for Article Nine compared to the other articles? I think it looks. It maybe. I think the header is. You know what it is? Yeah. It's not caps, so it okay. looks smaller. See caps. Yeah. Okay. Because the type and the description looks the same size. Yeah, it's just that like header. Yeah. Yeah. Um, would it be okay to allow Jane to comment on this if she wanted to? Okay, Jane, if you would like to comment on Article 9. Sure, thank, thanks for the opportunity, Jennifer. Um, I just, so as most people know and have probably seen and heard, and Andrew uh, sat on the committee, um, the school committee decided over a year ago to look at the regional agreement, make sure that it was up to date, make sure that it reflected current practice, uh, and make sure that it um, allowed for an equitable and fair educational opportunity for all the students. And those are the three lenses that we looked at the regional agreement uh, under, and we hired uh, consultants to help us make sure we were in line with uh, government's uh, standards, rules and regulations, updated educational reform act. Uh, and so the result of that is the this amended document that took all of those considerations in into to view and, and updated everything. Uh, and we're now looking for both the towns and the, the communities of Blackstone and Millville to hopefully support that um, so we can move forward and one, do the things that we've been doing anyway, and two, um, be in line with government and three, uh, be able to look at the way we educate students across the district and make sure that everyone is treated equitably and fairly and, and um, provide the best service we can to our students. So that's our goal and that's, why we're asking you to support this. Okay. Andrew, as you were on the committee, do you have any comments on the agreement? Um, no, I think we worked long and hard on it. Um, you know, I don't think everybody got exactly what they wanted, but I think <clears throat> this agreement is a good, very good starting point. It also is very important because currently everybody has different versions of the agreement and nobody knows which one's which is really, point. you know. Um, so I think this is a great starting point and it's a great area to unify everybody as to this is what we're governing. This is the rules that we're using. This is what is our governing, governing document for the district. So. Okay. okay. So I'm looking for a motion to recommend Article 9 for the BMR Regional Agreement Revision. I will uh, make a motion to recommend Article 9 uh, BMR Regional Agreement uh, Revision as it's written in the warrant. Second. 
Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Thank you very much. Thanks, Jane. Thanks, Jane. Okay, cruising along. Article 10, um, the senior tax work off program. So I know we talked a lot about this at the last meeting. So we capped it at 7,000 and added the veterans one for 3,000. Um, so looking for a motion to recommend Article 10, the senior tax work off program. So I'll make a motion to recommend our Article 10 senior tax work off program. Uh, as amended in the in the uh, you warrant. I'll second. Give me under a break. Any discussion? Yeah, so I have a few points. Yes. Um, some of them I brought up at the last meeting. Mm -hmm. um, and some of them I'll bring up again and some newer points I'll bring up. One would be how much you know, I, I know how we've been hearing that it's been, it's going to be very equitable and very profitable for us to do this, but what is the true cost? Cause like, let's say if somebody works in a department um, is gonna, you know, let's say just the assessors. Okay. Mm -hmm. And there's only really one person in that department to have somebody help file or do whatever task it may be that they deem required needed. That would take the time out of that one person's. So it would basically eliminate that department for the amount of time that they need to be trained. So I don't know how efficient this would be, um, especially during, you know, the beginning of the year or whenever it might be due to taking, since most of our departments only have one, maybe two people taking and basically sidelining an entire department for a week, some in some cases, to train somebody on how to do something. Mm -hmm. I don't know how efficient or wise that is. And do we know how other towns have incorporated this? I mean, most towns that probably have this are much larger and probably have a lot more people in their staff to still function properly and yet train somebody to help them out on their overload. Mm -hmm. um, but do we know how effective it has been in other towns? I'm not familiar with any other towns. I don't know if Peter or Kevin have any knowledge there. I don't, but um, I can't imagine that this program would be designed to have, um, you know, folks do tasks that are overly complicated or, or take a long time to, to have them be able to understand how to perform them. But that's just mm -hmm. my the way I understood it. Yeah, I would agree with that yeah. as well, that, you know, we have Peter here to kind of assess people like, you know, you wouldn't have someone who was, you know, I don't know, has a background in, you know, maybe administrative work to do really complex accounting and finance or something like that. So I think that, you know, I guess one point is I trust Peter and the people that work in the town hall to line up someone's background with the task at hand. And second, I think that this is kind of like, um, we're looking at an opportunity to try this so we can do it for this year and then see how it goes. It's not a terrible amount of money. So I am kind of giving it a trial period as well. So we can see if this works, then, you know, maybe we make it $20,000 next year. Maybe we're like, you know, this didn't go as well. We need, maybe need to make it five or just not have it again. I understand that. And I, I agree that it's not terrible, a terrible amount, but there's the opportunity cost of having it there because, you know, if it goes badly, we could really mess up some departments pretty badly. And if, you know, filing, if let's say they're just doing filing, that still requires some time to train and, you know, and to get them familiarized with all the things that they must do and tasks. Um, plus the fact that this would be pretty fairly part-time, like pretty reduced at part-time, how effective that would be if let's say they're only working five or 10 hours a week, you know, I mean, how much training can you get in how much, effective work can you get in in that small amount of time period to be effective and to be worthwhile for the town um i'm not saying that this is a bad pro program i think it's a really good program i just don't think that it's the right program for this town because of the size we are and the amount of people we have in our departments that just doesn't seem like it would make much sense to do that 
in the case that we have so few people mm -hmm. working in a lot of these departments. So yeah. if I could, just I think uh, all, all those points are very uh, uh, well taken. Yes, I, you know, I look at this and I fear an administrative burden and a lot of it will fall on yours truly and that's not too exciting for me. That said, um, it, it is an effort to try this. There's been a you know, request for this and a demand for it. Um, it. How big the demand is, I, I don't think we know until we actually put it out, have it available and put it out there. Will there be a lot of tasks? No, for you know, $1,000 worth of work, you're not gonna have somebody that's gonna be doing too much uh, beyond you know, helping out you know, with, as you say, filing. So if you, if you walk into my office and you look at that, it's a disaster and, you know, in terms of filing. It could become a bigger disaster, but hopefully somebody who might come in and help would do a better job certainly than I can do. You know? So I, I, I try to be optimistic that somebody will bring skill sets to the various needs that we might identify by department heads. You're absolutely right. People don't have a lot of time to spend training people. Um, my experience with this in another town back where I used to live in Sherburne and was involved in what was going on there. Um, you know, we had a handful of people that were steady participants in the program. They were very well received and they did add value. I don't know about their startup costs and, you know, involvement, but I'm sure we'll be dealing with that, but hopefully we get into a routine that there's some regularity and you know, consistency. So, um, you know, it's overall, I think, a good thing. I think in Blackstone, they have a pretty active program and it's, uh, um, they do some good work with it. But I don't know. Yeah, I agree that um, I think that we, again, I would believe that Peter would find the right person and and get the right person in the role. And um, if it works well, it could be a great benefit. If it doesn't work as well, I think we might figure that out like one or two people in and then maybe Peter says, you know what, we're just we're not going to be moving. We're not going to be taking any more applications for this program. <laughs> So we can kind of make that decision too. And Peter, would you be able to give us like a regular update or, you know, hey, we had two people come through the program. It went well. We had two people come through the program. It was okay. Yeah, and keep in mind that also Tina Cook, she's uh, actually the lead point person on this and has really stepped up to help make it a success. So I think between the two of us and folks that are involved in it, we'll, uh, we'll be able to come forward with letting you all know how it's going. Mm -hmm. if it's yeah. put into place. Yeah. And I'm, Andrew, I do think your points are valid as well. I'm not trying to be dismissive. I guess I'm, I, I do tend to be an optimist and I think that we should try it and see how it goes. And if it, if it doesn't go well, there'll be a lesson learned. Mm. But I, I understand your hesitancy. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Any, any other discussion, Andrew, do you have any other comments? Well, I mean, the other thing would be how much, you know, I mean, Mr. Crusoe, and I'm sure uh, the senior center director both have a lot on their plate. So adding this, how much will that, you know, how much time will that consume for them as well? You know, sifting through applications. I mean, that my whole thing is, is that, is it really worth it considering how much, how much utility can we get out of this program and how much are we putting into it? You know, I, I just, I don't know where the break even point is. And that's what scares me because it seems like it's a lot of, stuff that we have to invest into it and we don't really know how effective it is you know i don't know even what kind of analysis you could do to get you that answer without trying the program though well that's what i'm saying like because for a town like us you know one department being sidelined or you know one filing getting messed up so that you know delays happen with taxes whatever it might be could seriously hamper our town well in other towns if they have a couple people in there it might be a minor inconvenience at the best, you know, it might be a little less severe than here because, you know, to take that type of experiment, it's, there's a lot more hinging on it than in other towns where they have multiple people in a department who can even, you know, the whole time they can kind of supervise them and say, oh, okay, you know, what, what are you doing this week and monitor them? 
Well, here you can't really have that type of supervision at all as to see what's going on in a lot of cases, I'd say. So my thing is just, it seems like it's a lot of a risk for an unknown reward, you know? I don't think we would put them in a role though where like there was any kind of information that was sensitive or no but like let's say like a filing system you know if you have a filing system it seems simple enough and you think oh it doesn't take that much time if it gets messed up but if it does you know you can have serious delays and that takes a lot of time and then that costs money and it also inconveniences the residents because their files been misplaced so now it takes instead of five minutes to get it it takes 20 15 you know minutes to get it and that's it all adds up and it really hampers our productivity you know small things that add up and that's my my main thing is that it could cause a sort of butterfly effect on deadlines and productivity i don't know that's just my thought mm -hmm. Any other discussion? No, I, I, I would add that I, I guess my thought on this is that we would see more volunteer stuff like at the library or the Council on Aging and, 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 and other non uh, as critical uh, operational things. So I, I don't know. I mean, that was just my kind of thought that that's probably how things would start and that's we would evaluate and see how we would progress with that i i still think it's a worthwhile endeavor mm -hmm. all right is it okay to vote now andrew do you have any other questions or comments no, no? no okay no, I'm good. all right all those in favor aye Aye. Nay. Okay. Opposed? Andrew, I got you. Yeah. Okay. Um, so Article 11 is very similar to Article 10, just for veterans. Um, so I'm looking for a recommendation to support Article 11, the Veterans Tax Workoff Program. So I will move uh, to recommend Article 11, Veteran uh, Tax Workoff Program as written in the warrant. I will second. Any discussion? Same, same as before, I assume. Yeah, same. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's just the same. Okay. Um, so all those in favor? Aye. I nay for the same reasons as previously stated. <laughs> I think every we appreciate and everyone appreciates Andrew that you just repeat. Um, okay. All right. How many more? Oh, we're almost done. Um, so article eleven. No, it's twelve. Oh, sorry, twelve. Sorry, sorry, thank you. <laughs> Um, um, okay, so Article 12, acceptance, uh, public way acceptance of Hertzville Road. So, well, I'll do the, I'm looking for a motion to recommend Article 12, public way acceptance of Hertzville Road. I move to uh, recommend Article 12, public way acceptance of Herto Road as written in the warrant or as amended in the warrant at this point. <laughs> I'll second that. Thank you. Any discussion? Yeah, it was approved by the planning board unanimously. And so I feel I feel really good about this one. Okay, mm -hmm. myself. Um, so all those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. And looking for a motion to recommend to support Article 13, public way acceptance of Rondon Road. Move to recommend Article 13, public way acceptance of Rondon Road as amended in the warrant. I'll second. Any discussion? 
All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, and Article 14, looking for a motion to recommend to support Article 14, public way acceptance of Albert Drive, partial carriage one. Move to recommend Article 14, public way acceptance of Albert Drive, partial carriage one, as amended in the warrant. I'll second that. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, great. So we just held off on um, article three. So, okay. I can stop sharing my screen. Okay. And then the next item in old business is the appointment consideration. So consideration of the treasurer collector reappointment. So I know we have an executive session potentially to talk about this as well. Um, I think what I spoke, so I did go to the town hall and spoke with Lisa and Peter. And I think if we just discuss the process of things, which is not, I don't think we need to go into executive session for, I think that will clear things up. And I think that people in Melville would also wanna hear what the process is as well. So I think doing it in this form is probably better. Is that okay with every, anyone, everyone? What for me. Okay, mm -hmm. and Lisa, I see that you're here. So if I say anything wrong, I will look for you or Peter to jump in. So let me see, okay. Um, so my understanding of how this works and Peter, please correct me if I'm wrong, is the accountant comes up with the list of expenditures, whatever they are, and they'll match them against what was approved at town meeting. And if, you know, if something, if we allocated $10,000 and the bill comes in as $10,200, he'll kick that back or figure out a way to adjust. And then the town accountant does that for everything that's spent, that we're going to spend. And then it goes to Lisa and Lisa goes and looks at, okay, this amount is coming out of this account. So say we're looking to spend, to allocate, I don't know, $500 on paper clips and the paperclip account has $400 in it. She'll go and make sure that there's $500 in there to support the withdrawal that will be made when we go and pay our bill. And then she does all that matching to make sure that whatever is being funded, there's money in the account to fund the expense. And then it goes to Peter. And Peter looks at that and says, we're spending $500 on paperclips. Who thought this was a good idea? And so he'll go through and look at what's what looks okay and what does not look okay. So that was, I think, a very simplified explanation, Peter and Lisa, but is that the general way things are? Yeah, so um, basically how things get paid, you know, a department will incur an expense of some sort. They'll put forward a, a they call it a bill schedule, and the department head signs off on it, uh, notes the proper account code, uh, includes the invoice related to it, and that's then submitted to the town accountant. He prepares the warrant, which is basically grouping a whole bunch of uh, invoices that are due and have been approved by department heads. He does it. He prepares that for payment. He signs off on it. He, he reviews things for ensuring that people have signed off, that there's the right account code, and that there's uh, an amount in the account remaining. There's enough in the amount remaining budget-wise uh, that was appropriated to pay for what is being asked to pay for. Lisa separately, in her role, um, is just making sure the funds are available in the operating account and she prepares the list of checks, basically. And the whole packet, so they both will have signed off on the cover sheet of that warrant, which is what you've all seen and we talked about briefly in other sessions. And that's her, you know, the account account signature is everything matches and there's uh, budget amounts appropriate and so forth. And people doing the right sign offs and the right account code. The treasurer's uh, signing off that uh, the money's available in the bank, basically. And the town administrator you know, doing one's duty properly is reviewing the whole packet and asking questions or pointing out things that need you know, further clarity and whatnot. And uh, also making sure they, they make sense. Sometimes there's uh, things that are outside of the operating budget, and so they're coming by way of grants or other special funds. And again, 
uh, the treasurer is making sure the money is available in those special accounts and funds to do that. So if Lisa wants to chime in, hopefully I captured that properly um, as well. And she's on mute. She's not mute, she's mute. <laughs> So I guess I'm okay. Yep, I think you must have done a good job. So, um, so I don't know if that warrants going into executive session. Yeah. Or the matter which caused you know my you initial concern. Yeah. To hold on this. That's mm -hmm. right. And I know that Andrew had some concerns as well, mm -hmm. principally related to this. I think the same point. Mm. Well, my thing is that basically the way you describe it, it sounds like the treasure collector is basically a rubber stamp where she just says, oh, the money's there and then doesn't actually think and say if this doesn't make sense or something. I mean, in that point, why is there even a point of having a treasure collector if they're just saying the money's there and not checking as to why that would be and raising any concerns? I mean, it seems yeah, like a, a useless check and balance. Yeah, it's a... It's a it, it, to me, it's coming from the private sector. It's kind of a crazy way things are set up in the municipal sector, okay? Mm -hmm. So I know that I approve things four or five. I'm looking at something multiple times, you know, in a warrant. So by the time I'm signing off on the cover sheet, the things that fall under my domain, not necessarily things that fall under, you know, uh, some of these special you know, committees that sign off and things. Uh, I'll have seen stuff more than once by the time I'm seeing it to sign off again. Um, the, the way it's set up, the town account can't touch the money. Only the treasurer can touch what's in the bank. So that's really what there's a segregation do. The treasurer is not really looking at the validity, uh, the authority, if you will, of the expenditure. Um, that said, you know, in the private sector, when I sign something, I always believe I own it. Um, yeah, and like, likewise here, but that's not a training you find in the municipal sector. Yeah, it's not a, it's not a, it's not a necessary mindset. I guess is the way I would describe it. Um, I, mean, I guess the, free to chime in if she's available. I, mean, I guess I could. I mean, I guess I could say that it's not necessarily a mindset in the public, uh, private sector either, but you know kind of goes with the territory i mean you don't put your name to something and then not look into it and say hmm maybe this doesn't make any sense i mean if i'm putting my name on something i read every line of it i don't just sign my name on something so i, I don't think it's necessarily a thing of like how things are done in the public sector versus the private sector i think it's more of just a thing of you know you check what you're signing well, her, yeah her signature indicates the, the funds are available in the bank to uh pay for the checks that are being written. That's right, Peter. What they're going to is, uh, you know, really the town account and then ultimately the, uh, the final authorization of the warrant, which you know, though, is your town administrator. Before you adopted the town administrator, I think your selectmen were approving the warrants. At the time, right? So I think Lisa's on. Yep, I just heard her. Hi. Okay. Hi, Lisa. Yes. Hi. How are you? Hi. Um, Peter is absolutely correct. I'm only signing off that I funded the warrant. That's that's what I'm signing off on. Everything's already been checked by the accountant. He's he's you know made sure he's everything's attached. The invoices, the receipts. He's checked the um, account numbers, the signatures from the department heads. Um, then he's passing it on to us to fund the warrant. We transfer the money. Um, they're the only ones who can do that. Um, I sign off that I've transferred the money to pay all the bills. Uh, we do a uh, printout of the, the checks. We print out the checks and then we pass that on to the town administrator. So Andrew and Kevin, I don't know if you still wanna go into an executive session um, to discuss anything further. I mean, I, I have a much better understanding now of how yeah. the whole process worked. I, I, to be honest with you, I didn't before. So I, I'm, I'm good with what we're, where we're at right now. 
Yeah, I think for me too, once I understood the roles, it, it made things clearer. Um, Andrew, do you? Well, I, I just, I can't believe that anybody who designed a municipal system would say that this whole possession of funds being transferred out of an account would be in the possession of the treasurer collector and not imply that they should review those accounts being the funds being transferred. I mean, that just seems common sense and that seems almost too obvious. I mean, what, what, what would be the other point of having that be put in there? I mean, at that point, just have the accountant do it. If he's already checked everything and the account um, treasurer is just rubber stamps and says, yeah, the account money's in there, then why bother even having that point there? He can't transfer the money. Only the treasurer collector can. I understand that, but my point being is why would you even bother putting that in a system if there was no check and balance for that? That's where Peter comes in. So Peter, the town administrator, is the check and balance. At least mm -hmm. I understand your concern, but this like this is what the process is. And so have we, I don't know, if we're, are we allowed this with to other towns? Are we allowed to change it if we want, Peter? Like could we do things a little differently in Millville or no? Like is this a law or our municipal government? You're on mute, Peter. Uh, I know Lisa goes to treasurer schools every year and whatnot, okay. and where they go over what the what the role of the treasurer is and how you do do the job and so forth. Um, and you know, I think in other towns, at least my experience in you know Sherburne, where I was a selectman and we did the warrants. Um, yeah, the treasurer really didn't have much to say in terms of how or why we were spending it. The treasurer was just making sure we had the money available to um, honor the check that was the treasurer was writing. Yeah. I'm sorry. We've okay. worked with four different accountants since I've been in Millville, and it's always been the same system. But I think it's a fair statement to look into. Can we, you know, do we need another set of eyes or um, sure. yeah. things like that? Maybe. You know, we lost Andrew. Yeah, we did. Now we don't have a quorum. <laughs> we do not. <laughs> um, I can. We well, might come back. Whether you're going to take a vote tonight on this or not, I mean, yeah. it's a holdover status. Yeah. If you want other members, you can do that. Uh, ah, here he comes. There he is. Andrew, are you back and better than ever? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Sorry about that. Um, <laughs> so I missed the what Mr. Cruz said, unfortunately. Oh, he said that we could look at doing things like maybe changing things a little bit and, and seeing if we want another system of checks and balances. Peter, did I represent your thoughts correctly? Yeah, and I, you know, I don't know what that gets us. I, you know, how many eyes do you want looking at the same thing? That's really, ultimately, it's the department head who's responsible for how their their budgets are being utilized mm -hmm. and spending the money. The accountant isn't really weighing in on making judgment on the on the. I don't know how the right word. It's not propriety. It's not validity. But you know the the need for the what's being spent. Um, that's really the you know the voters when they appropriate you know go through a, a budget approval process. Um, then it really goes to the department heads how they spend it. The accountant does what we described. The treasurer makes sure the money's there, and knuckleheads like me you know look overall at everything and make sure they're doing what they're supposed to do. And that there's nothing stick, you know, that sticks out. As an example, <clears throat> you know, I had to approve something that came through on a phone, you know, cell phone bill, and there was some big charge, you know, for 500 bucks. It's like, well, what the heck is this? And it turns out somebody didn't turn in a phone on a new phone type of exchange. Mm -hmm. So they charged us. Well, so now we'll get a credit because the old phone came from it. You know, that, that's the kind of stuff I look for. But if you want to explore well, how others do it, we can certainly look into that. I think Lisa's got her uh, sort of 
group of treasures that she can sort of survey and come back with a, you know, like write up a little something how other towns do it. And then for the discussions on it. How's that sound, Lisa? That sounds great. Okay, so do we want to make a motion to reappoint Lisa LaRue as the town treasure collector appointment, or do we want to hold off until the 5th? I, I, I think we should hold so that we have uh, a full contingent of, uh, of the selectmen. That's just my opinion. Okay. Andrew, do you agree with that or? That's fine. Okay. Lisa, thank you for joining us tonight. That was helpful. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you. And you don't think a need, there's a need for executive session on this matter because that would involve Lisa, right? Oh, yes. Um, I don't need any other explanation, but Andrew and Kevin, if you want to, we can absolutely do that and go into executive session. Uh, I, I do not, but. Andrew? Um, there's a few things I'd like to look in, but not at the moment. Okay. So Peter, perhaps on the fifth, when we have a few more people and we could have the executive session then and discuss it with the full board if they're present. Okay. Yeah, yeah, as needed, yep. Right, as yep. needed. Okay, yep. great. Um, Thank you. Thanks, Lisa. Thanks, Lisa. Thanks, Lisa. Lisa. Good night. You too. Um, and one thing I did miss on old business and no one caught me. So meeting and planning considerations update under the special town meeting, uh, item number uh, two. Anything we need to discuss there for planning or consideration? Anything there that's? No, that, that's well in hand, I think. Okay. It's, a, you know, some folks are going to go out to the field tomorrow just to evaluate, want them to evaluate. Uh, there's a couple of tents the schools have put up and whether those will serve as the tents for the selectmen and the finance committee in case it rains mm -hmm. and put up the regular tents that we had the last time. So it's really just a change in orientation of the tents. And okay. Tim, as in his expertise of making sure his equipment is able to be utilized, I don't see uh, any challenge to that. He's the resident expert. He's good at that. So. Okay. People will not be able to go in the same route as before. They'll have to go in through the parking lot entrance to the field mm -hmm. um, because right now there's an 18,000 gallon empty tank sitting on the pathway as well as storage container and equipment and stuff right there. So that's blocked. So no big deal. Okay. Okay. Um, okay, so going back into the right order. So number eight, public forum. Tim, is there anyone who wants to speak on anything? Yeah, I'll message you some, some comments. Okay. You putting it in the chat? Yep. Okay. Wish you had something to entertain everyone with while we waited for the comments. Okay. Um, so there's a comment here from a gentleman in the audience. Um, you've lost staffing and assessing building planning, et cetera. We could use filing if nothing else. So I think that was a comment on the people who came forward for the uh, the two more articles. So. And then another comment regarding the treasurer. Don't the selectmen sign off on the same expenses and warrants? Why aren't they catching problems as well? No, the selectmen don't do that anymore. It's the town administrator. Okay. Yeah. Sounds good. Yeah. You've basically become a rubber stamp as well. <laughs> Except I'm not. Yeah. Andrew, you're really too young to be this much of a pessimist. <laughs> mm. <laughs> I'm an old spirit. I know. There you go. Hope that wasn't like an offensive comment. I apologize. But... No, no, it's fine. It's fine. Okay. <laughs> I don't get offended. Okay. Um, anything else? That was it. Okay. All right. Great. 
So thank you for those comments. Um, Selectman Forum, Andrew, town internet, social media presence and policy update. Yep. Um, so I have verified all the ones I mentioned in a previous meeting um, that they are official as far as I can tell. I mean, if they aren't, then they're really good at fooling it, but they're all official as far as I can see. And there were a few things uh, that I found that were to say the least highly suspicious um, in some cases, departments were posting updates about other departments activities. That seems kind of wrong because if, people use that as a source, it could be cause confusion and it also could, you know, cause unneeded um, miscommunication as other departments are posting about what other departments are doing um, or activities that they're doing. Uh, the most egregious incident I found was a case where a department publicly endorsed a candidate who was running for office. Um, so we might want to look into that as having an executive session and also I'd say that we should, for the spring town warrant, uh, organize some countermeasures and regulations to monitor what departments do on social medias, because as of now, we don't really have anything. Mm -hmm. um, and it seems like because of that, we have some of these incidences where things that are going on that should not be at all. And um, we should hold, you know, we should make sure that this doesn't happen again and, you know, hold you know, punishment for any wrongdoing that might have happened. Okay. So I would like to have a public, I mean, an executive session on one of the, the, the uh, departments and their social media. Okay. So I think what would make sense then is, um, Andrew, if you could email Peter the name of the department that... Yep. So that they get invited and then should we do this on october 5th or the 19th i guess how urgent do you think this is andrew well it depends on how if we have another executive session i mean i don't want to have meetings going on until midnight mm -hmm. um okay and i don't want to rush through anything um so i guess it depends on the scheduling of what we have on the agenda and whether we have other executive sessions on the meeting agenda or not mm -hmm. so I guess I'd leave that so, up to. Uh, so, yeah. So if you could send me whatever examples of whatever you're really talking about, that yep. would be helpful. Because I, I don't know if whatever you're describing would even qualify as an executive session item. So there's that okay. part of it too. But I would I would ask that, you know, if it can wait till the 19th, that would be great because I think we're kind of busy between now and the third and the fifth here. So yeah. Okay. Good. Okay. So then I would, oh, go ahead, Andrew, I'm sorry. I was just gonna say, I'll get that to you as soon as possible. Okay, my apologies, Andrew, for interrupting you. No, sorry. Um, and then the other thing that I did wanna talk about in October, I think we can wait until November or even December um, was kind of the appointment process and posting and reviews and things like that. Um, to make sure that we kind of have that in place. And then like I had thoughts around like a, maybe a better feedback process and things like that. So, um, and then if anyone um, who's in an appointed position, we wanna offer feedback. Like, I think it would be helpful to hear from people who are in these roles and would like, you know, what would, you know, what would make them feel comfortable too? Cause I want to make sure we're kind of balancing everyone's best interests so um but that because we don't appoint until july 1st again so we have some time <laughs> which is great um but yeah we could do that in november december maybe even january mm, no i'd probably have to be done this year because i have lots, yeah, lots yeah i think and you know, i think you're really talking you know both of these items are are in part policy setting that you're really wrestling with here as the policy setting body of the town. You know? and so that, these are all good, you know, it's a discussion and probably an iterative process for, for you all to get to where you think you want to be on both the appointments as well as, you know, how the social media is being used by the town folks. And, okay. and if there are any egregious issues like Andrew may, may be finding uh, those require some uh, direct attention. Okay. 
Sounds good. Anything else on the selectmen reports? Any other comments there? I have nothing. Okay. So town administrator report, update on assorted items. Peter, over to you. Yeah, so I'll try to be uh, brief. Uh, just to, I put on there the MES boiler project and tank status. So <clears throat> I don't know if folks not have noticed, but the tank is not in the ground yet. And uh, it turns out that the project leader for the, for the project, uh, Mr. LaRoche, he's been in front of us a couple of times. Um, he, um, he put a hold on what they were going to do as last approved uh, by the, you know, the town, if you will, um, and is waiting on a, a new design that will be more effective both in terms of cost, but also in terms of just anchoring the flow. So more to follow on that. Uh, he's probably, based on what he described to me today, it may take another four weeks before the thing is in the ground and fully operational. So in the meantime, uh, he was going to check with the fire chief, Chief Landry, uh, to see about putting up a uh, like a thousand gallon or two thousand gallon tank above ground as a temporary solution. So at least they have heat going over there soon. So more to follow on that. But basically, um, the anchoring design. We're on our second iteration that the town has seen and approved. We're now going to see a third iteration. And the, the third iteration as described um, by Brian to me today, <clears throat> sounds like it can be done with, still within budget and will result in a much more robust anchoring of the tank. And that's very important uh, from all I know so far and I've learned a lot. So there's that um, the tank status. If anybody has any questions, fire away. On the water and mass DEP, um, on connecting with our operator tomorrow, who's written responses and is meeting with his team tomorrow for the final responses to give the mass DEP on their conditions that they're trying to put on the town. And part of that is things that I have to approve and comment on. And so I look forward to that and I'll report back once I've sort of articulated my commentary that's going to go back and ask DEP. But I will say one of my concerns is actually here we are um, treating water that nobody uses. Um, the assumptions of the state are based upon a much larger population uh, fully using the water, potable water, none of which is being used in 60% of that population doesn't exist if they're using their assumption. So that's something I'm going to be concerned about with the state. Um, but more importantly, as I learn more, um, the water that we do use is actually uh, treated. And then it seems to me, and I'm learning more, but it uh, seems to me that some of the water is used to flush the treated filters, if you will. And that flush water then goes into the ground. And that seems to me it would be a greater concern for this state than it currently has been. So uh, I'll be uh, diplomatically raising that concern of mine to the state. Okay, so I'll report back to you more on that. On revised town hall hours, we are uh, certainly by next week going to go to Monday through Thursday, 9 to, nine to uh, 1. Uh, the same basic schedule we have at the window, but we're just adding two more days of uh, window availability for folks. 9 to 11 is at least Monday to Wednesday, the building and clerk. On Thursday, it's the clerk. The building does not uh, work here on Thursdays. And uh, 11 to 1 for the uh, treasurer, Board of Health, and the tax clerk. A little more convenience, we hope, for folks in here. That's about all I have right now, uh, given the time. So I'm not. On the town hall hours, because like, so I, I'm lucky that I'm working from home. So like, I can sneak down to see any of you if I need to at the town hall, but some people might not have that flexibility. So is the only option right now for an evening still just evening appointments, but they can, they can make an appointment to go. But, that's time. right. We, you know, we looked into that. There was very little demand. I know there's a couple of folks, but most of the things are also uh, tend to be transactions that you can do by way of mail and okay. online. Um, and if you need to have a face-to-face -face with somebody or mm -hmm. to understand something better, 
that's best served by an appointment uh, process mm. think, rather than drop in and maybe somebody's there maybe they're not and uh, then it's an additional cost to have to do and so uh, we, we morphed into this uh, uh, before COVID we morphed into a schedule that added more available hours and uh, when it came time that when taxes were due we added some hours on the Wednesday evenings um, for a couple of times but uh most of the time we've been able to manage without too many people looking for the evening. Okay, sounds good. Okay, number 11, items not reasonably anticipated 48 hours prior to meeting. I have nothing. Me neither. Okay. Um, signatures, so we were not, we don't have meeting minutes, so A is not needed. Um, we delayed the host community agreement. The roadway acceptances, so I didn't... Yeah, I put that in there, but it turns out you, there's nothing to have to be signed. Okay, because I didn't see anything to sign, so... Yeah, okay. no, there's nothing. So I didn't know that at the time of creating the... Okay, perfect. Um, and our next meeting will be Monday, October 5th. And if we need to have another meeting before the town meeting on October 3rd, um, Peter, I'm sure you'll reach out and let us know that. Yeah, so it'll probably be, uh, you know, no more than an hour before the meeting starts. So it might be okay. 11 a.m. Oh, okay, so you're thinking we'll have one on at 11 a.m. on October 3rd before the... Yeah, so it's 11 or 11.30, you know, I think that's really it. Okay. And, uh, it's good. just in case you, you know, to support the finance committee's mm -hmm. recommendation or not, that sort of thing, any last minute issues that you might need to consider before uh, you're in front of the voters that day. Okay. So I think we hit everything on the agenda then. Make a, would anyone like to make a motion to adjourn the meeting? Motion to adjourn the meeting. I'll second that. Any discussion? All those in favor? Oh. <laughs> oh, did you have discussion, Kevin? No, no that was me. I was just going to say, well done. <laughs> okay, thank you. All right. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Thanks, everyone. Have a good night.